Rich people are always in the news. The more people have, the more they're talked about. And once you're at a certain level, you kind of become a legend. Like Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman of Saudi Arabia. He and his family are worth an astonishing $2 trillion. What kind of lifestyle does he have with that fortune? I'm going to tell you. Who is Crown Prince Salman? Let's begin by briefly talking about his father. Crowned in 2015, Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud was born into the House of Saud dynasty in 1935. His father was the founder of Saudi Arabia, King Abdulaziz. King Salman is part of an exclusive family branch known as the Sudairi Seven. The seven include him and his six brothers, who in turn are amongst 45 sons fathered by King Abdulaziz. Yes, you heard that right, 45. King Salman inherited the title of ruler from Abdulaziz who passed away after a decade on the throne. Before that, he was governor of Riyadh province, minister of defense, crown prince of Saudi Arabia, and finally, prime minister. As you can see, the relationship between royalty and government is pretty close over there. Salman is partly credited with turning Riyadh from a town into a modern capital city. This involved tons of money, which of course, he's no stranger to. The title of crown prince then passed to Mohammed bin Salman, who was also prime minister. The crown prince, and at the time of making this video, is in his mid-30s. Pretty young to be in charge of one of the greatest royal treasuries in history, as you'll soon find out. Saudi Arabia is a land of prosperity and wealth beyond the majority of people's wildest dreams. Where does the Saudi fortune come from, though? Oil, which is extracted through Saudi Aramco, the country's state-owned oil and gas company. The Saudi state has existed since 1744. Their crude yet lucrative product would first be discovered there in 1938, making Saudi Arabia a world leader in oil exports. To give you a rough idea of just how wealthy the family and Prince Salman are, the House of Saad is reportedly 16 times wealthier than the British royal family, a much older dynasty. Where does he live? The royal residences are known for containing the very finest in decor, with gold seemingly everywhere you look. A criticism of the family is the way they flaunt their wealth, though for them this is the way it's always been across the decades. Also, their portfolio extends beyond Saudi Arabia, well beyond. Deep pockets lead to property being snapped up across the globe, as I'm about to tell you. The Crown Prince has been in the headlines for some of his economic decisions, not least of which was his purchase of the Chateau Louis XIV in Paris. This apparently cost him an eye-watering $300 million at least. With this property deemed to be the most expensive home on the planet, you can see how this royal family doesn't do things by halves. And what did he get for his enormous sum? In addition to 10 bedrooms, the 57-acre chateau has two pools a wine cellar, which isn't surprising because it is French, and a moat you can get up close and personal with, thanks to a glass-type chamber. While Prince Salman is said to be more noticeable than his other family members in the way he does business, the buying of the chateau appears to have been a secret of sorts. It didn't stay a secret, however, when a paper trail pointed to him as the owner. He is also said to own another 620-acre estate in Paris. So, what else does the crown prince spend his fortune on? There was the artwork that was partly painted by Leonardo da Vinci, worth over 400. $50 million. Salvatore Mundi set a record for an art purchase. The title is Latin for Savior of the World and is also called Jesus Christ. Another example of Prince Salman not just splashing the cash but unleashing a tsunami of money. As with the purchase of the Chateau, it wasn't entirely clear that Prince Salman was the owner of the painting. Some sources refer to him as the rumored owner. The man himself states that he is by nature a rich individual and seemingly has no problem with showing that off. How does he travel? Crown Prince Salman likes to travel in style, which shouldn't come as a surprise. The wealthiest people are closely associated with super yachts, and he is no different. In 2015, it was reported that he'd spent $500 million on one. Don't tell me that that's not a serene scene. The 439 foot long vessel is called the Serene, and it was the ninth largest boat of its type in the world. Now, there are double decker boats, but have you heard of one with six levels? Alongside the helipad is a giant on deck tub, which you can wallow in as you look out into the ocean. There's also a jacuzzi and seven pools. Kind of strange that there are so many places you can get wet, given that you are traveling on the water in the first place. One destination he is most definitely traveling to is a mega city. Yes, 
Yes, you heard that correctly. While we think of comic books like Judge Dredd when someone mentions a megacity, Prince Salman is the kind of influential person who can make that dream a reality. How much is it costing for him to construct this epic project, which is called Neom? $500 billion. It's occupying a 10,200 square mile area along the Red Sea and is reportedly 17 times the size of London. What does he want to do with this new city? The aim is to apparently create a technological and cultural center inside a city-state that will become world-class. If that doesn't sound eye-opening enough, the territory is also hoping to have flying taxis and robot dinosaurs, as well as be lit by an artificial moon. These fantasy concepts sound odd coming from a member of the Saudi royal family, perhaps, but then again, this is the man who threw what must be the world's biggest party on a private island in the Maldives. The Party Prince? The Crown Prince allegedly likes a party, according to a 2020 book, Blood and Oil by Bradley Hope and Justin Sheck. In 2015, he reportedly hired an island named Valar for an epic good time that apparently was planned to last not just days, but weeks. With rumored celebrity guests like Jennifer Lopez booked to provide the entertainment, this was the very definition of lavish. $50 million was the price tag for this huge gathering. The gender balance on the island was also said to be a little uneven. The ladies more than outnumbered the men, according to reports. And the story goes that when the women arrived, they had to take a test for sexually transmitted diseases. The party lasted just a few days. How come? Did the prince tire himself out with his alleged partying? No, he drew too much attention and so decided to get out while the going was good. The secret appears to have been kept for a few years till the Blood and Oil book was released. What he stands to inherit. I should also give you a quick overview of the dynasty and where they reside. This is what the crown prince will inherit when he takes over, and he will share in all of this when the time comes. However, he's already recognized as the de facto ruler of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, while his father has decided to take care of the more religious roles. Speaking of his father, King Salman was brought up in the opulent and historic Maraba Palace. Today he lives at Al Yamamah Palace, located in Riyadh. It's also where the royal court is based. The palace is famed for looking quite traditional from the outside, but opulent within. Chandeliers and marble floors all add to the impression of a true royal dynasty. This place makes Buckingham Palace look like a motel. Also in Riyadh is Al Orja Palace, which is a refuge of sorts for the king. Any instability in the area can lead to the ruler heading to the outskirts of town, probably to gather his thoughts. Maybe this is why the interior is supposed to be more low key. You could say the palace is a lot more old world in style and harks back to the history of the country in a more direct way than his usual residence. Urga Palace is almost like the guest room of the Saudi dynasty. Here the emphasis is on wealth, as the king dazzles his visitors with stunning yet strange details. Much has been mentioned about when the then President Obama dropped by whilst in Riyadh. The king sat in what appeared to be a golden paradise, where even the tissue dispenser was made of gold. Everywhere you look, there's luxury at an unimaginable price tag. All this will be Prince Salman's one day, and his alone, no contest. Is he up to the challenge? Time will tell. Would you like to know more about how the top 1% on the planet live? Check out these other videos.